Red Scoop TV. I'm sitting here with Colonel Kenneth Blakely, who's the commander of the Command and Control Support Agency within the U.S. Army. Welcome. Thank you. Talk a little bit about your first government job and what you learned from that. So I've been in the Army for close to three decades, and I started out as an armor officer with your standard armor platoon leader, uh, tank company XO, that kind of stuff. But probably what your readers and viewers are more interested in is what I did as, a, uh, as my first job out of that in kind of the IT role. So um, when, I was a young, or, yeah, when I was a young captain, I got a job at the National Ground Intelligence Center in Charlottesville, which is an intelligence agency, and that was my first time not to work among uh, a lot of uniformed soldiers. And I think my biggest takeaway from that, other than uh, broadening my horizon and understanding about the U.S. intelligence community, was the level of cooperation uh, that we have with our industry partners. So, I, I mean, I'll be happy to tell you that in my earlier career as an armor officer, we either didn't know that there were contractors out there, or if we did, we looked at them with a certain amount of ambivalence. But when I got to the INJIC, I realized that they were there all the time and they were the people I had to, to rely on to accomplish my mission and do a good job. So I learned to understand that those guys are there to help me and to help the government and to do a good job just like I am. Mm -hmm. And was there anything particular you did early on that helped influence your career? Um, I would say early on, the biggest influencer in my career was the fact that I went to uh, what's called advanced civil schooling in the Army. So the Army sent me to the College of William and Mary to get a master's degree in computer science. And that formal, um, that formal civilian education in computer science is probably the basis for everything I've done since then because it gave me the ability to kind of understand the technical underpinnings of everything as opposed to just the small area that I'm working in at, at that time. What advice would you give to young federal employees who might feel overwhelmed in their new roles? So it's easy when you get into a new job to not know where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, who you're supposed to talk to. The, the single best thing I've ever done when going into a new job is to gather the documents that, that kind of control that job, the SOPs, uh, the tactics, techniques, and procedures, the written policies that surround it. Get all that stuff sit down with a big cup of coffee and read it all with a highlighter, word for word, and become the resident expert on that stuff. Um, then you, suddenly you know everything that nobody else knows, which is how it's all supposed to work as opposed to how it all does work. And then you can spend the rest of your time making it work the way it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. What's the best career advice you've ever received? So. Probably the best career advice I ever got was probably something a lot of people have heard, which is find a mentor, somebody that you trust, somebody that's one or two levels above you, and he can kind of define, or he or she can define for you where you should be going, what you should be doing. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm confident I'm not the first person to say that. What has been more important to me was a bit of personal advice I got from an old battalion commander. And I remember we were sitting in the, uh, in the mess hall, in Grafenbeer, Germany, and it was cold outside and snowing, and we were having kind of a tough time because there were a lot of operations going on and we hadn't slept in a long time. And he looked at me and he said, Captain Blakely, I want to tell you something. He said, look around you. This is your life. This is what you get. It's not a dress rehearsal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Why would you recommend someone early in their career to pursue a government career? Well. Well, that, that's a great question. So feeding on what I just said, um, if I could take one thing away from almost three decades being in the Army, is that I get to go home every night with a feeling that I've done something with my time and my life which is bigger than just me. And, and I think that's what we all yearn to do. It doesn't matter whether we're in the government or we work for industry or whatever we do. We have a drive to want to contribute and the government service lets you contribute. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, um, that's what I would tell people coming into their career early on as a good reason to join the government. Now, later on you may decide to get out and contribute elsewhere, but at least for that chunk of your life, you did something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular resources you would recommend to someone who wants to further their career? I gotta tell you, the biggest resource I ever learned about and was able to use 
was when I was running Army Knowledge Online uh, between 2003 and 2006. And that resource is our industry partners. Those guys out there are the resident experts on everything that I need to know. So I uh, you learned to use them as my resource for essentially for education. So if I woke up one morning and realized that I needed to know everything there was to know about, pick a subject, enterprise service bus, I would call up my friends at Oracle or Symantec or wherever and I'd say, hey guys, I need to know everything there is to know about enterprise service bus. And they would come and set up some kind of resource for me so that I'd learn to be the resident expert. So my advice to people wondering what they should do to prepare themselves is use your industry partners. They're there to help you. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most interesting things you're working on right now? Well, I got to tell you that the biggest thing I'm working on right now is, is my organization, the Command and Control Support Agency. So we provide IT support to the G3 of the Army, and we're a critical resource for the senior leaders of the Army. What I have found over having been there for the last almost two years is that this organization is focused like a laser on the operational requirements of the senior leaders. And we have lost focus on the fact that it's also fundamentally an IT-based organization that needs to run on standard industry practices and policies. So while we are still focused on the operational requirements of the senior leaders, making sure their comms work, making sure their radios work, making sure their phones work, all that stuff, we have backed away a little bit and tried to see the bigger picture and focus my organization's efforts on, um, on industry standard processes that can be duplicated no matter who's in charge. Thank you so much for chatting with FedScoop TV. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it.